Abdullah ibn Hudhafa al-Sahmi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he was sent out in the battles against the Byzantines, and this was in the time of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he arrives at the Byzantines, he was captured. And when this group of Muslims was captured, Heraclius says that I want you to bring to me a captive amongst them who is considered a leader amongst them, most noble, and is considered senior to the rest of them. So they said, Abdullah ibn Hudhafa is your man. So they brought Abdullah ibn Hudhafa from his cell and he stood him in front of him and he said to him, listen, I will let you free and give you half of my empire so long as you renounce Islam, your religion, and embrace our religion of Christianity. So Abdullah responded, responded to him and he said, Wallahi, if you gave me everything that you had, forget about half of your empire, you give me your whole empire, the entire Roman empire, and you give me everything that the Arabs possess as well. I will not renounce my religion of Islam even for the blink of an eye. SubhanAllah, look at that strength. So Heraclius says, let me try something else with him then. So he says, put him back in his jail cell. And then he says, I want you to send him the most beautiful woman to seduce him in his cell. Let's see if we can break him that way. So Abdullah ibn Hudhafa is in his cell and they push this woman woman to seduce him in his cell and he turned away from her with whatever direction she came at him from. So if she came to his right, he turned to his left. And if she came to his left, he turned to his right. He wouldn't even look at her completely unmoved. And she tried all sorts of things to seduce him. But subhanAllah, he maintained his faith even in that regard. And this woman came out after completely giving up and she said, I've never seen anything like this man. It's like he's made of stone. It's like he's a statue or something. He's completely unmoved by anything that I did to seduce him. So the admiration is growing in Heraclius, even though he's trying to break him. He says, you know what? Then starve him and don't give him any water for three days. Let's see what happens to him then. So they left him in a cell, no food, no drink for three days. And then at the end of the three days, he says, take him some pork and some wine. Let's see if he eats pork and he drinks wine. So he refuses as well. And Heraclius, he says, doesn't your religion allow you to consume this in hardship? He said, yes, but I didn't want to give you the pleasure of a companion of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam eating pork and drinking alcohol and wine so that you could mock the religion of the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Heraclius says, put him in the position of crucifixion. So they hang him up to be crucified. And then he says, bring forth the warriors and throw spears and shoot arrows at him all around his face, all around his body parts so that he feels the pressure in every direction. And he doesn't flinch. Who is this man? And Heraclius says, bring him down. He makes him an offer again. He says to him, listen, leave your religion, embrace my I will give you half of my empire and I will marry you to my daughter. He says, no, absolutely not. There's nothing that would cause me to leave my religion. So then Abdullah ibn Hudhafa radiallahu anhu narrates something actually very painful and it shows you the mindset of these tyrants. He said that he then ordered for a container of boiling oil to be brought in front of him. And then he called for another one of the Muslim prisoners and he took that Muslim prisoner and he had him thrown into the container of boiling oil right in front of Abdullah. Abdullah ibn Hudhafa. And he said that as soon as that man was thrown in, he started to shout frantically. And it was only a matter of seconds, subhanAllah, that his flesh was burnt off of his body and his bones rose to the top. I mean, that is another level of torture and cruelty. And that is something that could truly break a person. To see that happening in front of your eyes with that brutality and to know that what's being said to you is that you're next if you don't comply. SubhanAllah, what a test. Heraclius then says, pick him up and throw him in the container as well. As Abdullah ibn Hudhafa is picked picked up and he's about to be thrown into it, he starts to cry. So what is he thinking? He's thinking that I finally got him. Clearly he's afraid now. So he says, bring him down, bring him back to me. So as he is brought back to him, he says to him once again, accept half of my empire, renounce your religion. He said, no. He said, well, why did you cry? Aren't you afraid of what I'm going to do to you? He said, no, that's not why I was crying. He said, then why were you crying? He says, I wished I had a hundred souls and each one of those 100 souls would be sacrificed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wasn't crying because I was afraid. I was crying because I knew this was the end. This was shahada. This was that martyrdom that we had seen so many of our companions go through. And I had wished that I could give everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a hundred times over. So he says, SubhanAllah, what is this man? He was so shocked by him. So he says to Abdullah, kiss my forehead and you can go free. Abdullah said, I don't want to kiss your head and I don't want you to kiss my head. Even that's not happening. He said to him, if you kiss my forehead, I'll let 60 of you go. So he's negotiating now how many prisoners will be released in return for him kissing his forehead to affirm his superiority after refusing to be broken by his tactics. So he says to him, no. He said, if you want me to kiss your head, you don't just free 60 captives, you free all of the Muslims. 
He said, fine, all 300 of them can go free if you kiss my head. So Abdullah finally went up to him and he kissed his forehead. And then he took those Sahaba and those Tabi'een back to Medina. And when they got to Al Medina, look what Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu did. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu went up to Abdullah and he kissed him on the forehead as he had kissed the emperor's forehead. And then he ordered all of the Muslims to also go up to Abdullah and to kiss his forehead radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Oh.